In this video, I'm going to show you how to create Facebook ads for a restaurant in 2023. If you're the owner of a restaurant and you want to start advertising on Facebook or Instagram, or if you're someone that is already running ads on Facebook's network for a restaurant, whether it's your own restaurant or for your clients, you might find that this video is helpful. I find there's a lot of tutorial videos on YouTube that will show you how to get started with Facebook ads or how to create a campaign and how to get going. However, there's not a lot of videos that show you what to do when you are running ads for a restaurant. There are a few important things that I think restaurants need to do when they're running ads that will really help to maximize your ad spend. One thing, for example, is that when you're running ads for a restaurant, your restaurant is only open for a certain uh, time during the day. You have certain hours of operation and you are going to want to run your Facebook ads so that they show up during your hours of operation, especially if you want people to, for example, order online or contact you to place a takeout order or something like that, where you want the customer to be able to take uh, action and you don't want to disappoint them when they click on their ad on your ad to find that you're not even open. Um, so this is something that I see restaurants do all the time. A common mistake that restaurants make, they'll run their ads for 24 hours during the day. What you're doing in essence is you're wasting money spending your ad budget over the 24 hour period instead of during those hours when you're open. And if you've ever run a restaurant, you'll know that there are certain days, certain times of the day when your customers or potential customers are just more motivated to act. And uh, for example, during the lunch rush or during the dinner rush, or in my experience, you know, Friday nights between 5 and 7 p.m., that's like a critical time when people seem to be very interested in ordering takeout food. And so if you run your ads during that time and you you spend all of your, your daily budget during that time of the day, you're going to find you're going to get more orders. Um, it's just the way that it works. And that is based on my experience. Now, my experience, I've been running Facebook ads for 15 years, or I don't know exactly how many years, but for many years since Facebook ads started. And um, I'm actually a web developer and software developer. And so I'm not a Facebook advertising you know, agent or expert or anything like that. I'm not trying to sell you Facebook advertising as a service. I want to show you how to run your ads properly. Based on my experience, um, the things that work for me, I'm going to show you what I typically do. Now, the project that I've uh, been mentioning, the, the project that I'm involved in right now is called Chow Local. Just in a nutshell, for those of you who do own restaurants, Chow Local is a commission-free food delivery app, a commission-free online ordering system. Our goal is to offer restaurants an alternative to those big food delivery apps, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Skip the Dishes, Just Eat, you know, Grubhub, all of those apps that end up charging restaurants a commission every time they get an order. We're on a mission to you know, offer restaurants an alternative to that. So if, if that sounds like something that you could get behind, by all means, check out chowlocal.com. That is my only goal with this video, besides showing you how to run your own Facebook ads, is to get a little bit of exposure for the project that we're currently um, focused on. Now, uh, with Chow Local, and, and this this will you'll see how this ties back to the ads, because I'm going to show you how to run Facebook ads that have a specific goal. And the goal that I'm going to have in this demo is to get more people to order food online through one of the restaurants that's on our platform. In fact, I just set up some ads for this restaurant. You can see they're in review right now. And I thought while I was setting this up, I thought it's it's time to make a video just to show other restaurants how to do this because I actually don't have the time to set ad campaigns up for all of the restaurants on our platform. And I constantly get contacted by restaurants who need help or who find that their ads are not performing well. So hopefully this video will be useful to you. This is Delhi 360. They're a local restaurant um, that's in my hometown. They're using Chow Local um, and they have a button on their website that someone can click to place an order. So what we're gonna do is 
we're at a basic level going to set up an ad campaign that is going to get people to click on this link and to land on this page and then hopefully place an order. That's our goal. Now let's get back to ad manager. By the way, if you don't have ad manager, if you don't know what ad manager is, if you're just starting out with Facebook ads, I am not going to show you how to create an ad manager account. Like I said, I've been running ads for many years now. I can't even remember what I did when I created this ad manager account. All I can tell you is you need an ad manager account. I know there are videos on YouTube that will show you how to create an ad manager account. So a Facebook ad manager account. I'll maybe even put a link in the description if I can find a nice video after I'm done recording this video. Otherwise, if all else fails, feel free to send me an email. You can always um, send an email to info at chowlocal.com. I'll put my email address in the description of this video. I'm happy to help restaurants. I want to see restaurants um, make as much money as possible and at the end of the day, not pay the big delivery apps uh, thousands of dollars in commission. So if you can if you can take charge of your own Facebook ads and your own marketing, that um, aligns with my goals. So let's get started. Let's create a new campaign. Now, by the way, if you're new to Facebook ads, the structure of Facebook ads, I just have to touch on this. You've got campaigns and then within a campaign, you've got ad sets. Think of that as a collection of ads. And then within each collection or each ad set, you can have multiple ads. So for example, you could have an ad campaign that you run during the summer. Uh, or you could have an ad campaign that has got a f that's got uh, uh, f the goal of the ad campaign is to get more traffic to your website versus you might have another campaign that you want to just promote your Facebook page and get more likes or something like that. So you separate your campaigns and then within your campaign, you can have different ad groups. So if we use the example of, for example, having an ad campaign for the summer, uh, you might in your ad campaign have an ad set for, for breakfast ads. So ads that only run during the breakfast hours of the day. You might have an ad set that is only for lunch and an ad set that is only for dinner. And then each one of those ad sets will have different ads uh, in those ad sets. Or you could have an ad set that is just for people, you know, uh, who are between the age of 15 and 25. And you could have an ad set that targets people between 25 and 35. And so then you can ultimately see which ad sets are performing better. There's lots of different ways that you can organize and structure your ads. It's up to you how you want to do that. And I'm going to show you how I do it. Hopefully you can learn from that and, you know, improve the way that your ads run. I try to keep things very simple. Uh, let's just go here. Now, I've got a campaign here that I've got for all the restaurants um, on Chow Local in my hometown uh, that want help with their ads. So that's where I'll put their ads. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a new campaign. Okay. First thing you want to do when you create a campaign is you need to choose your objective. Now I mentioned my objective is to drive more traffic to the online ordering page. Your objective could be to create brand awareness. In this case, you know, Facebook will just optimize your ad to get seen by as many people as possible, whether they click on it or interact with it or not. It just, you know, it's just sort of a, sh a shotgun approach. Um, and then you've got engagement where the objective of, of the ad is to get more people to, you know, to like and comment on your ads, that type of stuff. Lead ads are good for service-based businesses where you want someone to fill in a, a, a form so you can collect their information so you can send them a quote. And then there are ads to promote your app and sales ads, which obviously would also be relevant for someone that does online ordering. Um, but here you're setting up conversions um, and I'm not going to show you how to do that right now, although it is something that I do uh, regularly. Okay, so let's choose traffic and then we're going to continue. Now, all of what I'm showing you up to now is very standard. Any one of those other videos that you would find on YouTube showing you how to create Facebook ads is going to show you all of this. What I'm going to focus on and you'll see as we get going here in the next minute, I'm going to show you those settings that are kind of hidden and not very obvious that you really need to look at um, and turn on 
or activate um, if you own a restaurant or if you're running ads for a restaurant. These settings are, as you can see, you know, if you're looking at how, for example, this page is set up, it's not very obvious that you can edit some of this stuff. Like you have to scroll over it in order to see the little edit button. And then beyond that, you might not know what's going on here. You don't, you might not know, you know, um, what to change. So I'm just going to show you what is important to change the rest of it. You can just leave as it is by default. So, uh, we'll give our campaign a name. So I'm just going to call this my traffic campaign because the objective is traffic. I want more traffic versus maybe another campaign that would be for engagement. And um, then what we're going to do here is we're going to skip this part because this is only if you're running ads for these special categories. So like employment ads, housing ads, social issues, credit, your banking, loans, all of that stuff. Then you have to fiddle around with this field here. But you can just leave this. We can leave this here. Um, objective. Sorry, I keep getting phone calls. I'm just going to pause my screen. Okay, so let's just check our traffic objective is still set there. If you change your mind, you can change that. And there's nothing else that we need to um, change here. You can do a ad, uh, you can set a spending limit for your campaign, um, but we're not going to do that at this level. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to continue on to the next step. So, our ad campaign is now set up. Now we're going to create our ad set. So this ad set, I will typically call the restaurant's name or whatever, but you can call it whatever you want. So um, let's for now just call this ad set one and we'll come back and change the ad set name. Now, all of this is, again, basic stuff like this is not specific to a restaurant, but I'll show you what I like to do. So with this ad set, you can see within a campaign, you can have an ad set that can have an objective that is like slightly different than the, 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 the campaign objective, which is to drive traffic. So you can say like what, what a conversion would be for you. So a conversion would be obviously if someone goes to the website and um, Facebook sends that traffic, like the person clicks on the ad and they send them to your website. That's what we're going to consider a conversion in this case. Now, I'm not going to get into conversions um, right now because you can set there's more complex stuff that you can do with conversions where you can actually keep track of when the person actually places the order and they get to the success screen that's shown after they place the order. You can count that as a conversion. That way, you know, you know, how many orders were actually placed as a result of each Facebook ad. But for the purposes of this, uh, I don't want to get stuck in the weeds. We're just going to pick website um, as our conversion. Now, you could have some other goals here like phone calls and all that. But to me, that doesn't make sense when I'm trying to get traffic to my website. Okay. And I often see restaurants that, that choose the wrong conversion here. Um, so make sure that you select website. Now, let's move on. Uh, this is really what the area that's important for restaurants. So here you can see we've got our daily budget, which is the default. And what most restaurants will do is they'll decide how much they want to spend per day. $30, $20, $200, whatever you want to spend. Ultimately, the more you spend, the more people you are going to reach based on this estimate here. So for example, if we say we're willing to spend $200 a day, you're going to see our reach is going to increase drastically. So now our ad might be seen by 51 to 145,000 people in a day. Okay. We might get as much as 2000 to 6,000 clicks in a day, but um, we're going to keep the budget small here. So we're going to do $20 uh, average budget. I would say for a restaurant starting out that just wants to get their feet wet is around $30 a day. And the way that I look at it is if you set your ads up properly and you can get one more ad, uh, one more online order per day, um, then, you know, that sort of covers your cost because the average order through our platform uh, for a restaurant is like $48. So, you know, get one more customer that you would not have usually had, then you're going to be happy. And then anything above and beyond that, that the ads bring in would be gravy. And obviously that's what we're after. So 
um, but we're going to not actually set a daily budget. And this is the point of um, actually one of the main points of this video is if you want to be able to schedule your ads. So you see here, uh, not only can you schedule the, the date range or when your ads start running. And for example, if you want to run your ads for one month, you can, you know, go pick uh, the date that you want your ads to stop. So that way you can control your budget. Or if you just want to advertise for two days and spend $30 a day, you can do that. And that's obviously one of the nice things about Facebook advertising is that you've got that control over your budget. However, what we want to do with a restaurant is we want to set our ads up so it only shows up at certain times of the day. And you'll see if you click on this option, it's not very obvious that you can even do anything here. It just says ad scheduling is run ads all the time. And that's the default. And this is why most people um you know don't know how to set their ads up properly for a restaurant because this option is is kind of easy to miss and even if you click on it it looks like there's not much to do now if we scroll over it you can see uh, edit button shows up but we can't do anything with it and so just even it's almost like facebook doesn't want you to schedule your ads um and so what we have to do, and this is sort of the pro tip here, you have to go and select your budget as a lifetime budget. Now, with a lifetime budget, there's a, a level of inconvenience that comes with this because you cannot, um, you cannot just, uh, for example, set your ads to run indefinitely. You have to decide how much you're willing to spend on this ad campaign in total. And so, for example, if you have a $30 daily budget, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply $30 by 30. That's going to give you your lifetime budget because what we're going to do, the lifetime of this campaign is going to be one month. And then after the month is over, what we're going to do is we'll just copy that campaign and recreate it. It'll take it'll take a minute uh, in the future. So a month from now, you just copy the campaign, you use it as a template to create your next campaign and you just adjust your dates. And so then that's how I run ads. Uh, if, a, if a restaurant has a budget of $900 for the month, you know, once the month ends, I just go create the campaign again. So there's a little bit of manual um, labor that's involved in creating these lifetime campaigns. Now, you could decide to set your lifetime campaign for two years or three years or whatever. Facebook will not charge this amount in one shot. Like we could say we want to run these ads from, you know, from today uh, until, you know, the for the next year. And over the next year, we're willing to spend, um, let's just say, for the sake of demonstration here, we're willing to spend 35 um, you know, or actually if our, if our monthly budget is, um, if your monthly budget is $900 and let's just do some quick math here. You want to run these ads, uh, sorry, not 9,000, $900 and you want to run Facebook ads for a year and you want to budget, we're going to be looking at a budget of $10,800. Okay. And we're going to run, spend that over a year. It's, it, it, it warns you that this looks a little bit high, but that's okay. Um, like I said, Facebook won't charge you this amount. So uh, however you set up your lifetime budget is up to you. I typically just set a lifetime budget that basically will cover one month. So in this case, $30 a day for uh, 30 days. And then what I do is I set my ad to run for one month. Okay. Now, because we did this lifetime budget, because we selected that now, if we come back to this little section here, we can edit our schedule. And again, almost like Facebook, you know, doesn't want to, us to uh, schedule these ads. We now have to, again, opt in for this. And now you will finally see your, um, your, you know, your, your weekly schedule here. So what we're going to do with this restaurant, we're going to start running our ads at 11 o'clock. We're going to run it for another hour from 12 to 1 to 2 and then to 3. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little break there and then I'm going to start running my ads again from 4 five, to 5 to 6, 6 to 7 to 8 to 9. However you want to set it up yourself, for example, if your restaurant's closed on a Monday, 
you don't have to advertise on those days. Obviously, you don't want to advertise on those days because it would be money wasted. And you might also say, you know what, on Tuesdays for lunch, for whatever reason, people are not even that motivated. I get some orders, you know, around the dinner time, but the window is a lot smaller. So you can really go and set your windows for when you want to run your ads up however you think makes most sense considering your target market or considering the customer um, experience that you have um, with your own customers. So um, that's my ad schedule. The great thing here is all of these other time slots, my ad will not be running. So this $900 that I'm willing to spend in a month is only going to be spent during these hours. And right there, you are going to immediately get more bang for your buck. Um, especially considering the fact that people during this time of the day or this time of the week are hungry, typically. You know, this is when people get hungry and advertising food to someone who's hungry is the easiest thing on earth, I personally think. So, you know, coming from a from a background where I've run ads for all types of different businesses and where you really have to convince people to, you know, buy your product or opt in for your service, selling food to someone that's hungry is super easy. <laughs> so that's why it doesn't make sense to me that restaurants would give 30% or 20% of their revenue to a food delivery app when it's actually really easy to sell food to someone, especially if they like your food, especially if they're a return customer. You know, um, if you're seeing lots of reoccurring orders through those big food delivery apps, you should definitely look at something like Chow Local, which will not charge you a commission every time you get a reoccurring order, because obviously your customers like your food and it's got nothing to do with the the, the food delivery apps marketing efforts efforts. Anyway, I'm off track here. You get the point. This just this one little feature here. If you just do this with your restaurant ads, you are going to be way more successful. But there's more and let's get right into it. So here we are now in the section where we are going to target the audience that we want to show our ads to. And as you can see, by default, because I live in Canada, Canada is selected. And I cannot tell you how many times I see restaurants from Toronto and Vancouver. I live in the middle of Canada in a town called Regina, Saskatchewan. I constantly see ads for restaurants in Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, all these cities all over Canada. These restaurants are showing their ads to me. They're paying for me to see their ads. And there is no way that I can support those restaurants. I can't go and eat there. I can't order online unless one day I travel to those places. So I know that whoever set up their ads are used to just, you know, skipping over this step. And it's very important that you edit this step. Now, what you'll see here is Canada is selected by default. So what we're going to do firstly is we're going to just say, actually, we'll come back to that. We're going to type in this field here, this name of the city where we are or where you are. Okay. So I'm in Regina, Saskatchewan, as I said, and I'll just type that in and select it. Now, instead of Canada, I'm at least targeting this area. But you can see it's pretty big. Like if you, if you zoom in here, this is our entire city of 250,000 people. And it's also covering like a lot of rural parts, which is fine. There's not a lot of people that live there. So it's not that I would be spending too, too much money on that. However, um, this restaurant and our delivery service in the city does not offer delivery outside of the city. And there, as you can see, are two little communities out, like, almost like um, uh, small municipalities that, that have a few thousand people, you know, that are now being covered. So I don't want them to see my ad because I don't want to disappoint them when they realize that we can't deliver to them. So what we're going to do here is what you would typically do is go where you've selected the city that you're targeting. You can see that the radius is set to 40 kilometers. Now, typically what you would do is bring this down to as small as possible. Okay, so 17 kilometers as a radius is the smallest radius you can choose by default. And this is what most 
people do when they actually remember to set the targeting um, so that they're not targeting the whole country. And even then, as you can see, you're still covering a pretty large area. And I don't want to do that with my restaurant. I want to focus my dollars on a smaller area. So now I'm going to show you how to do this. And this is the next pro tip that I want to give restaurants that want to run ads on Facebook. So click on the zoom in uh, on the map, get as close as possible to the marker that was placed when you added the city. And then click on this little button here that allows you to drop a pin. And now you can go drop a pin. I'm going to drop this pin right next to the, the, the pin that was already dropped. And now what happens is now instead of defining a city, um, it is defining coordinates wherever that marker was dropped as my center point. And now I'm focusing still on a 16 kilometer radius. However, for whatever reason, when you do this, you can now actually reduce this radius down to one kilometer. So if you live in a densely populated city like New York City or some place that I've never been to, you're going to find that um, there's probably a million people that live within a one kilometer radius. If you're in a city like ours, a one kilometer radius is not that big. So what we're going to do here is we're going to increase this radius and I'm going to set a radius of seven kilometers. And let's just start with that. So especially when you're um, selling delivery, it is good to focus on people that are kind of further away too because they would have a real incentive to to order delivery because you know it's convenient for them to just get it delivered um, so now you can see here that a seven kilometer radius kind of covers the whole city and there's a few people that would be outside that radius we can maybe increase it to eight kilometers and we would probably be fine but that's the area where I, people living in this little dot on earth those are the only people I want to see my ad. Everyone else does not matter to me as a restaurant owner. So um, that's the idea there. Now we're going to go back to um, a setting here uh, that, I made, that I touched on earlier. You see here by default says people living in or recently in this location. Now if you live in a city where there's lots of tourism and people coming in and out, you have to be careful not to leave this setting checked because what will happen is your ad will be shown to people who are in this area and who were recently in this area and that might be someone that you know is halfway around the world by now so what we want to do is we want to just say we want to just show it to people living in this area and obviously facebook knows where we live you know um it knows everything about us so that's going to actually be also very helpful to just make sure that we're not spending our ad dollars on people that have no chance of actually ordering food from us. Okay, so now we can move on. Next, you're gonna target uh, people of a certain age. Now, if you've got a big budget, you can just leave this as is, just target every everyone within that circle, doesn't matter what their age is. Uh, if you have a smaller budget, um, you want to try and do a bit of targeting to like just keep re def re defining or refining your target audience. But you also want to make sure that if you are focusing on a small geographical area, because you can now see here my reach has gone way down. I'm now going to reach between uh, 599 to 1 1.7 people per day. Okay, that's still a lot of people that I'm going to reach. Um, you know, but uh, as you're making changes here, it's going to have an effect on your potential reach. Now, this is just a, a suggested or like an estimate. I find sometimes I get way more clicks than this, and sometimes I get less. It has more to do with the quality of your ads, the images that you use, the words that you use when you create ads, all of that factors in. But Facebook is saying, based on what we've done here in terms of targeting, this is roughly what we can expect. And you'll see as you fiddle around with these settings, uh, for example, if we now say we just want to target people between the age of 25 and let's just say for sake of demonstration here, 35. Okay, so now I'm really narrowing that window down to people that are between these age groups and live in this area. Um, and as you can see there, it has an impact on my um, potential reach and the number of clicks that I can expect to receive in a day. Okay, so um, the more targeting you do, 
the more your cost per click will also essentially go up because Facebook will spend, it'll take that $30 a day that you're willing to spend. It's just not able to give you as much. However, what you're getting is more focused and targeted. And this is why I say when I run ads or when I tell people to run ads or the way I like to run ads, I don't really care too much about, you know, getting a, a thousands of clicks every day if those people that are clicking on my ad are not actually you know going to order from me um, i would rather focus on less people that are more likely to order um, and i think that's a better way to spend your ad dollars now as we're going through this just think of any other advertising medium you know billboards radio ads and the sort of targeting um, and measurement that those mediums offer. Right here, you can see that Facebook is just in a, and, and any online advertising, obviously there's Google ads too. I'm a Google ads uh, expert and I run lots of Google ads and it's obviously a different um, ball of wax, but just being able to do this in itself is so valuable. Um, I think from a marketing standpoint, being able to define your target like this. So, but let's broaden this, um, target here but so people between the age of 20 and we're going to say you know doesn't matter like anyone um over the age of 20 that the reason i go 20 is because i think okay they might have a credit card by this time in their lives and so on so okay so this this is the the age demographic we're going to target you can also target people by gender uh if if needed um and Otherwise, what I usually target all genders, depending on, you know, if, if I was running ads for a clothing store, obviously, if I was advertising women's clothing or men's clothing, then I would use this. But in this case, you know, uh, we just want to target everyone. And then we're going to get to this detailed targeting here. Now, this is not a pro tip, but um, this is just something I like to do when I am trying to get people to place online orders. I will target people that I think are most likely to order food online. And the way I do it is I just target some of the big food delivery apps. So P I target people who are interested because you can see here there it shows whether it's an interest. So um, as you're typing, I'm going to type skip the dishes here. It's going to show me people that are interested in skip the dishes. Now, as I select this, keep an eye on my potential reach because now within this group of people that I'm targeting, I'm going to further refine it to just focus on people who are interested or who like this food delivery app. Okay. And you can see there what an impact that has had on my potential reach. Now you might decide not to do that. You might be you know, sort of thinking, well, you know, my, everyone loves my food. It doesn't matter what they're interested, what they're interested in. You know, uh, everyone gets hungry three times a day. I just want to show my ads to everyone. And by all means, you can do that. However, if you have a small budget, I think it's better to do a little bit of targeting and then you can always like expand your target a little bit. So what I'm, what I like to do, especially with online ordering is I like to target, like I said, food delivery apps. So I'm just going to keep doing that right now. So I'm just going to type the, the names of some of the big food delivery apps in our area. Um, and the other one is DoorDash. Now you can see here, this doesn't really increase my, my reach very much um, because I think according to, you know, Facebook's demographics, people that like one of these, they sort of like all of them. Um, it had maybe a small impact. And then what I'm going to do next, instead of like coming up with ideas for people to, to target here, I'm going to click on suggestions and I'm going to see what comes up. And so here Facebook shows people that are interested. Now it says, you'll see, and it's kind of buggy here, but you'll see it says people that are interested in food ordering. Okay, food and drink. It says there are 58 million people that are interested in that. Now that's globally, that's not in that circle. Okay, so these numbers are just to give you an idea of the global potential reach that you could have. But again, with the restaurant, that doesn't matter. So, but we're going to target these people nonetheless. Um, we're also going to target people that like, um, uh, let's just, you can, and there's all kinds of other options here, home delivery. Uh, and let's just see here. Um, 
local food for sure, uh, especially if you've got a local restaurant. And with Chow Local, we really love local restaurants because we feel that if you're a local restaurant and you decide to go on a, a food delivery app like Chow Local and you decide to ditch those big delivery apps, your customers will follow you because they don't have another option. You're not a part of a chain or something like that where, you know, if you decide not to be on DoorDash or Uber Eats, you're comp- there's another, let's say you run a Burger King. If you decide not to be on Uber Eats, there's going to be 10 other Burger Kings. So you'll be shooting yourself in the foot. But if you have a local restaurant and you say, I'm not going to be on DoorDash anymore, well, guess what? Your customers are going to order wherever you are because they love your food. They love to support local and they can't find your food anywhere else. So um, that's why we love local restaurants. And I definitely want to target people that love local food because Delhi 360, this restaurant here specifically, they are fighting against the bigger um, sub places like Subway. And they're, you know, that's sort of their their um, competitor. So they are a local alternative to the big sub sandwich stores. And so I definitely want to target people that identify or that are being identified by Facebook as interested in local food. And we'll leave it at that for targeting. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And the next bit here is um, placement. And you can just go with um, manual or like automatic placement, which as you can see is recommended. And what this will do is Facebook will just take your ad and show it wherever it can and where all of the possible ad spots and and there's a lot there's facebook uh there's instagram there's messenger there's even all the websites that are on the internet that have that have ad spots you know your local newspaper like the the sports website that you might read every day or all of these websites that that have ads on them their ads might be powered by facebook's ad network so if you advertise through facebook you could get your ads seen on all of these other websites and apps And if you choose this option, your ad is going to be shown everywhere. But what I like to do, and again, this is just personal preference at this stage. I like to choose where I want to show my ads. And so I'm going to not show my ads in Messenger. And I'm not going to show it on the audience network. The audience network is all those other websites that that have um, ad spots that are powered by Facebook's network. And then... Here you can drill down a little bit more and you can click on feeds. So for example, all the feeds uh, include like the Facebook feed, the Instagram feed, as you can see here, the Facebook marketplace, Facebook video feed that I usually turn off right away. I find that when I'm watching videos and someone advertises while I'm enjoying a video, I just get angry. So I don't want people to get angry at my brand. And I just turn those ads off. But again, personal preference. The Facebook right column, you can show ad there or not. Depending on which spots you choose, you're going to have to format your ad slightly. And so I also like to just um, keep things simple and not have too many different uh, ad formats and stuff. So I, I'm going to turn off Instagram Explore, uh, Instagram homepage. Instagram shop for sure. Turn that off because you're not selling a retail product. And then um, in stories and reels, you can definitely um, create ads, show your ads there. But then you're going to have to format your ad to be more vertical like this, which, you know, uh, maybe not a problem. I personally don't like to advertise in reels. I just find that, you know, when it comes to conversions, I I typically don't get good conversions. in reels and then uh in stream here again with the videos and stuff so i'm not going to show it there and then when people are searching on facebook um there's an opportunity to advertise in the search results and i find that can be effective this in article um i usually turn that off as well but it's up to you you can decide where you want to show your ads okay and then uh there's more Um, that you can do here, you can, you know, choose to only show your ads on certain devices. So for example, if you're trying to get people to order through an app, you know, you might want to just, um, and if it's an Android app, you might want to only advertise on Android devices. So if someone's looking at Facebook on an Android device, then you would show your ad. 
and then uh, the the rest of this is all good. Now we can continue on. So our ad's going to be seen roughly, or it's going to get clicked roughly 17 to 49 times a day. Um, and depending on how good our ad is, like how enticing the message is, the image, um, we might need to get 10, 20, 100 clicks in order to get one order. So that's that conversion rate. Um, and the better your ads are, the better your conversion rate will be. But now we've got our... Um, Actually, let's go back to our ad set. I just want to show you one thing that I mentioned at the beginning. I called this ad set, ad set one. But what you can do here is you can call this people, um, or you can just say, you can say um, 25 to 65. So these are people, people between the age of 25 and 65 who like, Uh, food ordering apps okay because that's really who i'm targeting here and um you can say in regina or wherever whatever territory especially if you've got you know like um different branches or different um you know if you're operating in different cities you might want might make one ad group that targets people in one city and another ad group that's exactly the same but just targets another city so by naming your ad group like this, you kind of get a sense just by looking at it, what that ad group, who you're targeting. And then eventually, if you have multiple ad groups, you'll be able to compare the performance of those ad groups and see which ad groups actually perform the best. Also, if you are, for example, setting up an ad group that targets people between 25 to 35, and then another ad group that targets people between 45 to 65, then you can compare those two ad groups and see which you know are the best with the goal to eventually turn off the ad groups that are not performing and just leave the ones that are performing all of that takes more time right now i want to keep it as broad as possible because our reach is already very low and so i don't want to you know create too many ad groups but you could do one ad group that is very focused like this like on people that like food delivery apps and then you can do another ad group that is essentially the same, targeting people in your city, you know, between the certain same age group, but maybe that I don't don't identify as liking um, the food delivery apps. You could just do a, or maybe they like your local football team or whatever. So you, you could compare those ad groups and see which is best. And then here we want to say, we just want to make sure that when you're setting up your ad account, this is. Uh, right at the start of the process and again this is something i did many years ago when i first created my ad manager account but you can define your time zone so you can say whether you want to use when it's scheduling your ad are we using the user's time zone which we can do because we're only targeting people who live in our home city but um you know you could also just uh, i guess change this so that it's the account's time zone but if you're not sure if your account time zone is set properly, then just use the user's time zone. Sorry, I kind of got distracted there by that setting. Let's go to the next step here, uh, which is the final step, which is to now create our ad. So I'm going to create my first ad. I'm just going to call this ad, ad number one. Now you can define, you can describe it more. You can say, you know, ham sandwich or whatever. Uh, and then... We, you have to connect your ads to a Facebook page. Now, when you set up your ad account, you're going to connect your Facebook pages will be connected to your profile. So here you can see a bunch of pages come up, select the one that is most appropriate. And then also the relevant Instagram account, because this Instagram account is already connected to this Facebook page, it automatically fills that in there. So we're good to go. Uh, our ad setup, we're going to create an ad here. We're going to manually upload. Okay, and then we're going to do a single image. Okay, so let's continue on. So here, let's upload an image. And as mentioned, I just set up some ads here for Delhi 360. So I should have a couple pictures here for them. So let's pick one of these pictures. And there you can see there's my picture. And that's what it will look like in that other format. If needed, you can crop the image a little bit so that it fits nicely and then click next so i'm going to move this out of the way and done so now that i've got the image uploaded for my ad by the way this is my next pro tip for running ads for a restaurant always show food 
um, you know, show something like this. Like I'm just looking at this picture as I upload it and my mouth immediately started watering. That physiological reaction that someone has when they see food, you want to leverage that when you're running ads for your restaurant. So this is something I've always told restaurants is don't try to get too creative with your ads. Like definitely don't run ads with logos and, you know, a bunch of text and words and stuff that just clutter the image. Just take your phone. When you guys make a nice meal at the restaurant, take some photos of it and show those pictures of that mouth-watering food that your restaurant produces and use that to set up your ads. That in itself will help your ads be way more effective than trying to do something more abstract or, you know, sort of lifestyle based or whatever. Like the last thing you want to do is show, you know, two people sitting on a park bench having food, you know, shot from a distance. Like we get it. That's like sort of that idea of propaganda and selling the lifestyle. When it comes to restaurants, just focus in on the food and that will that will just be the best. Okay, now you've got your primary text here. And as you can see, uh, for whatever reason, Facebook's got a bunch of mumbo jumbo here. Just delete that. And what I like to do is I like to say, I like to have a call to action here. So with Chow Local, restaurants can set up promo codes. Um, so I'm going to say here, uh, get $5 off. Oops. Well, let's just go back here. Get $5 off your first order. When you, your first online order. Want to make sure that they know that. with promo code and then I will come up with a promo code that I only use in my ad so for example FB5 and then of course um, in my Chow local account or whatever system you're using to do online orders uh, or to keep track of promo codes you're going to want to make sure that you've got this promo code set up and the way I've got it set up in Chow local this code is is set up so that the customer will get $5 off only their first order. And I set a minimum of $20 for the order total before they can uh, actually use this code. And um, I made the code so it's private. So it's not shown anywhere publicly except for wherever I mention it. So now if someone does place an order with this promo code, I will know for a fact that they either saw it in this ad or someone that saw it in the ad told them about this promo code. So um, that's how I do that. So, but you can get creative here with your wording, you know, entice people, call to, call them to action. And what I will do is I will typically then put a link to the online ordering page. So here we've got the online ordering page open. I'm going to copy that link and I'm going to paste the link here. So now my ad said, get, says get $5 off your first online order with promo code FB05. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of that zero because it's it can be a, you know, it could be, is it an O or is it a zero? So I'm just going to um, say promo code FB5. This is actually the promo code I have set up. And then um, just going to post a link there where they can order online. And that's it. So um, next, what I want to do is there's this headline. And by default, in this case, it's taking the Facebook page that is connected and it's putting the name of the Facebook page as the headline. But I wanted to, to say something else. I'm going to say here, Delhi 360. Now, when... Uh, when a restaurant asks us to help them run ads, we only help the restaurants that are actually on our platform. Um, I will put the restaurant name in as the headline, but you can do whatever you want for a headline and you can do multiple headlines. So if you want Facebook to try different headlines, um, then it, then you can just add another headline. I'm just going to do one headline. I want to keep it again, just keep it simple. And then here's my description, which will show up below the headline, but there's not a lot of um, text. And as you go through some of these examples of what your ads will look like, you will see that, for example, this ad here, 
which shows up in the marketplace, Facebook marketplace, it doesn't even show a description or anything. So you don't want to spend too much time on this or, you know, coming up with a wordy description. I just want to say uh, order online. Pick up. Or delivery. And that's it. So if we go to the default ad here, it will now show us Yeah, so you can see that description doesn't even really show up um, in too many places. In fact, I don't see it really in any of these ads. Um, now, your call to action button, uh, that's the button that shows up with your ad. So you see by default, it says learn more. Now, we don't want it to say learn more. We want it to say order now. So it's just more uh on the nose as to what the button does like this is how you're going to start your order if they click on that button they're going to go to the link that we are going to provide and that's the link that i just copied here for the online ordering page wherever your ordering page is and we're going to paste that link in here and then the rest of it you don't need to fiddle around with you can just leave it um uh, if you wanted people to call you, you can opt in for this, but I don't. When I'm, when I'm trying to get people to order online, the last thing I want to do is put a button for them to call. When, when restaurants get phone calls for online orders, at least this is our belief, it just ties up a staff member. You know, someone needs to answer that call. It's better to just get the order online, especially if you're not paying any commissions. However, if you did want to put a button there to let people call you, um, then you can just punch in your phone number here, but I am not going to do that. I'm going to keep focusing on sending them to this online ordering page. And I just got to make sure that I uh, change the wording of that button again, because it's not changed since I picked the phone option. Oops. Okay, so order now. So my ad looks good. And that's it. Now it's done. I'm going to hit publish. And my ad is set up. So now what I've got is I've got a campaign. We can You can see here it's just busy publishing. Okay. And so we're good to go there. Uh, if there was any errors, Facebook would tell you. Now what we've got is we've got a campaign that is called traffic. And then we've got an ad set that targets people between the age of 25 to 65 who live in Regina, who like food and uh, who like food ordering apps. That's who we're targeting. And within that ad set, we've got an ad that shows, uh, I don't even know if that's a ham sandwich, but here's a pro tip that I want to show you. Once you've got an, your ad set up like this, now creating your next ad is going to be very easy. Just check this box, then hit control C. If you're using a, a, a PC computer, or if you're on a Mac, you can hit Apple C to copy, or you can check the box and then go here and just, uh, let's see if there's an option to copy. No. Uh, okay, so you can click here, hit Control C, which will copy, and then hit Control V, which will paste, and then it'll duplicate that ad. And now you can see here, it gives it the same name as before. Everything's exactly the same. It just adds the word copy after. So I'm gonna change this. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm just going to call this ad number two and with the short description, uh, whatever, you know, another sandwich or whatever. I don't know what I'm going to do for this one. Uh, everything is exactly the same as the previous ad. So now all I have to do, because I just want to see which image is the most effective. My wording, I'm going to keep the same consistent for all the ads, but I want a different picture. And so I'm just going to pick a different sandwich picture that I've got here. Oh, and let's just go back to the, let's just go here. Uh, let's delete the picture again. I forgot to crop the image. I noticed just as I uploaded it, it didn't look good. Um, okay, here, let's pick this image. Okay, so it's, it looks fine. 
maybe it was a different image that I selected. Okay, yeah, here we can see the image has some gray at the top and bottom. That doesn't look good. We again, we want to drill in on that image. That that's what's going to get them, get the person's mouth watering when they see this delicious sandwich. And so there we go. Now we've got another ad created that's exactly the same as the previous ad. It's called ad number two. And what Facebook will do, it will actually take your daily budget. Um, and it will run both these ads sort of randomly and it will, this, it will actually figure out which of these ads is getting better action. It'll kind of show that ad more. Um, and then eventually what you can do is whatever, sometimes you, uh, I've run campaigns where I've got 50, 50 different, um, uh, ads in an ad set, you know, for like selling clothing and stuff. And where, you know, we've got 50 different photos of models wearing the same garment. And for whatever reason, one of those pictures will just get like three or four times as many conversions as um, the others. So then we just start to prune away the, the images that the ads that are not performing as well. So you ultimately end up with the ads that are going to give you the best bang for your buck. And this is why it's important to actually pay attention to your Facebook ads. You know, like I think a lot of people that run Facebook ads just set it and forget it. And I think if you pay attention to your ads, if you're constantly making subtle little changes, because you won't know, you won't have all the answers in the beginning when you set up your campaign. For example, with the targeting that I just did, I'm just starting somewhere. I'm using my best guess basically to start somewhere. Over time, if I find my campaign is not performing as expected, I'll start to refine my campaign. I might create another ad set that instead of targeting people who like you know, skip the dishes and Uber Eats, I'll do one that targets people who like sandwiches or who like Subway, you know, and I'll see how that, that ad set um, performs compared to this ad set. So you can really get lost in this. Um, and that's why I always tell um, restaurants that ask for help, I just really don't have the time to, to focus on it to the level that you can. The good news is if you actually set it up the way that I just set, set it up, your ads will perform better than any other form of advertising out there. That's a fact, um, you know, and sure, you could you could spend hours on it and get it really, really dialed in and be absolutely surgical with your Facebook ads, you know, but, but that takes a lot of time. So hopefully this video was helpful, guys. Again, if you run a restaurant um, and you are tired of paying commissions to the big delivery apps, if you are brave enough to hitch your wagon to a little startup that started a year and a half ago and that's making a big impact and helping restaurants save thousands of dollars. Um, please check out Chow Local. Reach out to me personally if you are unsure of you know how we can help you. We're always looking for more restaurants to get on board. We're trying to grow Chow Local and get it up and running in more cities. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.